Retro Gamers, welcome to another episode of Retro Game On. Today we take a look at Road Rash for the PS1. While the Road Rash series started on the Mega Drive originally, this version is ported from the 1994 3DO release, which was later on ported over to the Sega Saturn and the PC in 1996. Awesomely, this means that it retains its graphical 2D scaling approach. While Road Rash 3D also on the PS1, released 1998, scored harsh reviews from critics because they didn't feel that it lived up to its legacy. However, this version does utilize the power that 32-bit systems have to offer by having a fully licensed soundtrack and full motion video clips for the cutscenes. Road Rash, basically, is a bike street racing game with a difference. You can attack your competitors in order to get an upper hand. You should have seen my face when I found out how awesome the context of this game is. Wait, 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 wait. I get to ride motorbikes at high speed down highways while kicking and chain whipping my competitors while grunge plays? It's amazing this has a GA plus rating when you factor in all the violence and all the cutscenes of everyone drinking and fighting. This was classified GA plus by the old rating systems in Australia. These days the game is likely to be shunned and burned in the street by a classification board. There are 5 tracks in total, which get spread over the 24 levels in the big game mode. The big game mode is a careers mode. While there is the fresh mode, which is basically the equivalent of an arcade mode. What saddens me is how much I had to say the word mode in that last sentence, but what saddens me more is that there is only 5 tracks to begin with. I wish there was more, but I guess all those songs and cutscenes take up valuable space. In the big game mode, you keep repeating the same 5 tracks over and over, only passing on if you qualify each one. Every track is the same in each session, but the difficulty goes up for some variables, such as increased traffic and making the opponents more aggressive. Sadly, there isn't any traditional split-screen multiplayer. There is a mode where you can swap between two players using the same controller, but it's all a bit pointless. This game would have been amazing with split-screen. Imagine the amount of lounge room trash talk gold it would have generated. On top of that, it would have made the whole game quite replayable. I mean, there is the thrash mode, but the same five tracks do get stretched thin after a while. The handling for the bikes is quite good. I can't comment if it's realistic or not though, as the last time I was on an actual motorbike was when I was 12, and that ended in me driving into a tree. <laughs> it feels quite smooth though, and it's very satisfying to weave through traffic and other obstacles at high speed while attacking cops and other competitors. The only negatives I can come up with are because of the nature of how the graphics are represented, sometimes it can be tricky to line up properly with opponents to attack them. Once you do get into the rhythm of it though, it gets easier. At the risk of not sounding too demonic too, it's also quite satisfying. Another quirk I'm not a fan on is how long it takes to get back onto your bike after you have a crash. The length of time varies on how far away you fall from your bike, as the character literally runs back to the bike to get back onto it. You have no way to speed this up, and you'll always lose a few places. Luckily though, the tracks are quite long, so it's usually never a problem to reclaim back your position. Small issues for such an awesome game though. Depending on what position you place, you earn money which can be used to buy new bikes or pay off fines if you get busted by the fuzz. The menus for the most part are entertaining. It's all backed by grungy art and you can even have a chat with your fellow bikers. The only thing that irks me is how long it takes to navigate them. It's quite laggy and can sometimes take up to one second to transfer from one option to the next. Obviously, this can get quite irritating after a while. Also, when you're browsing bikes to buy, you have to endure a pre-rendered animation every time that can't seem to be skipped. I'm sure the renders were nice in the day, but now it just seems like showboating and it takes up my precious retro gaming time. Graphics in this game were considered to be quite outstanding for the time. While the older games in the series were just 2D, this release mixes in scaling 2G objects, like the cars and people, in with a fully 3D environment. Not only does this give it a standout original look, it makes everything look quite smooth. You can tell that they substituted anything that would look crappy in 3D with 2D. While this seems like a cheap tactic on paper, it actually comes out quite well. While I don't agree that it's photorealistic like the box claims, it's still quite impressive. Even more so we consider how big the levels are. The cutscenes in this game are outstanding. The cutscenes play for everything. When you start, when you finish, when you crash, when you get busted. They're all hilarious and well made too. 
looking quite grungy to fit in with the menus and music. Usually when there is full motion video cutscenes and games of this vintage, the acting and production values are terrible. I guess acting like a group of drunken partiers isn't too hard though, but I can't stress how well it's all done. Since there are heaps of them too, they don't get repetitive or annoying either. The music and the menus and the cutscenes in this game are stupendous in my opinion because I am a huge fan of grunge. It has a nice selection of licensed music including tracks by Soundgarden, Therapy and Monster Magnet. This was huge for the time. No games had real music in them back then. I'm too scared of copyrighted music screwing over this video though, so instead of the actual audio, I'll just badly tap it and whistle it instead. It's a shame they don't actually have all this licensed music playing as you race though, it's only in the cutscenes and the menus. The music that does play though, isn't actually that bad. It's very bassy and quite obviously inspired by the alternative music scene of the mid 1990s. I guess this all comes down to how much of the PlayStation system's resources would have gone into the huge levels and graphics. There just wouldn't have been enough oomph left to play the full audio tracks as well. The game sold very well, making plat- Ugh! Platinum casing! Side note, why do platinum cases always look so fugly? These games have sold immensely well and it's like the consumer and developers get penalised for it. Just because you've done well and dropped the price, doesn't mean the cover should look like a turd. Ranting aside, this game is quite worthy of your collection. It's not perfect however, multiplayer being excluded my main gripe. Its small problems are small sacrifices though, making this quite worth the purchase. Since it isn't all that replayable though, I won't put down too much of your hard earned debit card dollars, because seriously, who uses cash anymore? I paid $5 for my copy from a cash converters. This was a pretty good deal considering it came complete with the instruction manual and the disc was in pretty good condition. The only downside being that it was the platinum casing. I wouldn't pay more than $10 though because it is an easily accessible game considering how many copies were sold. So yeah, don't get ripped off. Either way, that's all I have to say for today. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and thanks for watching.